was head of the FBI in Southern California for the most part, except for two southern counties in California, San Diego and Imperial County. I was in charge. I had over 700 personnel under my command. I had a budget of $22.5 million. We were the elite investigative organization of the world in our day. There's no question about who was responsible for the 1993 bombing of the World Trade Center. Through their informant, Salam, the FBI informant Salam, they had control of whether or not to place a dummy bomb or a real bomb there. They placed a real bomb, and the reason they did was to pass the anti-terrorism legislation. There were only six people killed, not enough to pass the legislation. Now, by the way, the reason there were only six people killed is because the car bomb would be placed by a support beam of some sort, a pillar or a post, and there was another car illegally parked there, so they couldn't put the bomb exactly where they wanted. Otherwise, that old trade center, the World Trade Center, would have come down at that time. That was their plan. So then, in 1995, we had the, uh, the Murrow building in Oklahoma City, 168 people killed. Then, a year later, they passed the anti-terrorism legislation. But I'm telling you that the FBI knew about this. They had control of it and uh, did nothing to stop it. We had the Marine Barracks, their embassy in Kenya. Uh, we had Pan Am 103. Uh, we had the USS Cole. Uh, we had Oklahoma City. We had the World Trade Center in 1993. Our government was involved in some of those. I can't say all of them because I don't know, but I do have documentation that there was government implication in some of these. And we'll discuss them as we go. Well, Ted, um, the people out there, I mean you, did you know that the World Trade Center uh, went up when it was bombed internally? Uh, that it all was put together by an organization called the FBI. Is that this is 1993. 93. Yeah. Yes, uh, I have a, uh, and I'll show this on camera, uh, a newspaper article from the New York Times, and it was also an article in the L.A. Times, by the way, and it's dated October 28, 1993, and it's a result of testimony in the trial, and the informant, the FBI informant in the trial, a fellow named Salam, a 43-year-old former Egyptian uh, army officer. He was Salam. Right. He was the informant for the FBI. And he recorded his conversation secretly with this. So when it came time for trial, he said, hey, wait a minute. Here's what really happened. Now, he told the FBI in advance that they were going to bomb it. He was assigned, uh, uh, given the assignment to put the bomb together. And he went to his supervisor. FBI supervisor and said, we're going to put a dummy bomb in here, right? He, and the FBI supervisor said, no, we're going to put a real bomb. Oh, wait a minute. Let's name names. John Antisef. Was and, the supervisor. Yeah, he was the supervisor for the FBI, and he winds up in the, some, with having something to do with, with, the, with the Kenya uh, investigation. So here's a guy who's involved in setting up the World Trade Center for, you know, to be blown up, and it resulted in the deaths of six, six individuals, over a thousand injured, uh, half nearly a hundred dollar, million dollars. Uh, half million, uh, five hundred million dollars, oh no. Uh, a lot of mi millions of dollars. Millions of dollars, yeah. And, and that property damage. Right. Now, if justice were done, the FBI agent would be not only in jail, but executed for murder in the first degree. And is the chief suspect in the attack upon the World Trade Center on September 11th, is not the chief suspect the individuals or individual agency that bombed the World Trade Center in 1993? Based on what happened in 1993, the FBI not only knew in advance they were going to bomb the World Trade Center, they furnished the ingredients for the bomb. Based on that, I would say that the FBI is the primary suspect, but also I think we have to consider the CIA. And the reason you have to consider the CIA is because when you skyjack four airplanes simultaneously, 
with 19 skyjackers, that is no small operation. That took years to plan, number one, and hundreds of people had to know about it in advance. Now, our government, NSA, was monitoring bin Laden's phone calls in February 1998. Are you going to tell me for one minute that we didn't know about this in advance? The CIA had to know about it. The FBI had to know about it. The Mossad had to know about it. Now, um, MI5, British intelligence, had to know about um, it. The CIA knows about it. The FBI knows about it. The commander-in-chief, the president, would have to know about it. Of course he does. And that would mean that, that Bush had prior knowledge and that would implicate him in reality, if, if, if we wanted to face this thing as it really is, in murder, in the first degree. Let me explain. Let me explain to the audience what's happened here. Okay, back in the 80s, 1980s, uh, the Department of Justice proposed legislation to fight a terrorism. And uh, this legislation took away many of our constitutional rights and civil liberties. One of the authors, a female attorney with the Department of Justice, publicly stated, made this statement, I've got her name on my file someplace, that before this passes, people will have to be killed. Well, so that was the reason I feel for the 1993 World Trade Center bombing. Unfortunately for them, fortunately for us, the good guys, there were only six people killed, not enough to pass the legislation. So what happened is, uh, three years later, no, 93, two years later, April 19, 1995, down comes Oklahoma City, uh, Murrah Building, 168 people killed. One year later, the anti-terrorism legislation that takes away many of our constitutional rights and civil liberties is passed. And now with the uh, Twin Towers World Trade Center episode, our Congress is now proposing further restrictions on our constitutional rights and civil liberties. These explosions, these terrorist acts, were an excuse to pass anti-terrorism legislation. And then to implement. And then to implement, yes. And this is what's happening in the world today. And that's why, that's why our intelligence people are not only knew about in advance, but probably involved. There's no question. You cannot possibly have an operation of this magnitude without our people knowing about it. Now, our government, the FBI... When, when, when you say our government, and i got to you know, challenge well, you, this isn't our government, well, it's the banksters' government, because they control both political the parties. Government, the government, yeah. the government knows the what, where, why, and when, and how and they bra I had a FBI supervisor brag about this to somebody else, and it got back to me, of every patriot and every militia in the United States. Now, if they know that, are you going to tell me that they're not going to know about the terrorists coming and going? By the way, this operation, based on information that's come out since the attack, the terrorist attack, was planned in England, London, England, the training took place in Afghanistan and in the United States, and these terrorists came in and took pilot training here. And as I said earlier, Bin Laden's phone conversations were monitored, according to the press, in February 1998. Are you going to say they didn't monitor them after that? No, no. Well, wait a minute. No. The NSA, no. NSA employs probably 150,000 people. I don't know what their payroll is. I mean, it's the number of personnel. But they have taps on virtually everybody in America. This was part of the anti-terrorism legislation that was passed after Oklahoma City. Well, that's exactly what Adolf Hitler did when he went down the Reichstag. Well, why do you think they're trying to do away with the Second Amendment? 